Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Headline Amp Fungicide and Pride Seed. Bernard Tobin on the Corn School, joined today by agronomist Paul Sullivan. Paul, how's it going? It's going well. It's going well. Hey, thanks for taking the time. It's the it's June first, and I want to talk to you about the corn crop and uh, you know getting out there, doing some scouting, assessing stands. But before that, hey, what are things looking like in your neck of the woods? You're in Kinburn, Ontario. Things are are looking, for the most part, very good. Uh, we've got uh, corn that's uh, mainly at the two-collar, three-leaf stage, some pushing to three-collar, four-leaf, and a bit that's behind. But uh, no matter when it was planted in April, uh, first week of May or the second week of May, a lot of corn is at the same stage right now. And uh, it's, uh, it's moved ahead significantly in the last 10 days. Uh, putting out a leaf almost every two to three days, which is uh, has really changed the uh, um, the the crop in in a very short period of time. So, Paul, it's time to get out and scout, uh, assess some fields. When you get out there, uh, what are you looking for? Well, Burn, we we are uh, looking at the plant population. That's the key assessment we're doing at this point in time. We usually look at four rows, <clears throat> measure one one thousandth of an acre, and count the number of plants. But beyond that, we're we're also looking at the uniformity of the plant development and, and early emergences there. And so we will um, look at how uniform uh, the plants are, if they're all at the same two collar three leaf stage, or if we have plants that are are behind. So. Um, that becomes an important consideration as to the number of cobs that will eventually form out of those uh, corn seedlings. Mm. We, we also assess the seed bed. Um, we look at the soil conditions, see if there's uh, uh, seed slot issues that are going to restrict the early development of the root system. Um, we look at the, um, and that may be a cause of the lack of uniformity or, or reason for the uniformity. It always amazes me how we can look at a field very early in the season and uh, if that field looks uniform and, and, and comes up uniform, the potential for that field is always, always high. <clears throat> so the soil conditions, the number of plants, the uniformity of the stand <clears throat> are key f- are key uh, observations that we make this time of year. Yeah. So let's talk about what a good looking field looks like, Paul. I mean, do you want all the plants emerging within, you know, like a two or three day uh, window? You know, you don't want any any laggards. What's 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 optimum emergence for you? Well, we we'd like to see um, in a stand if we've planted say thirty five thousand, we we'd like to see thirty three and a half to thirty four on average. And, and we'd like to have um, most of those plants, uh, at, at least uh, um, 34, uh, 33 of those plants that are at the exact same stage of, of one another. And uh, it's impossible to be perfect, but we, we, we don't uh, um, go out every day and check the stands. But when we're there, we can basically do the same thing by looking at the stage of corn development, the, the leaf itself. And we usually count collars because collars are visible. And if, if the corn plants are all within that same collar stage, as I said, now we have a lot of corn at the two collar stage, then we would say there's no difference in development on that corn. And that sets up for um, lack of competition between plants. So corn Cornfield, ideally, every plant in that cornfield is this exact same stage at this point in time. And that means that it's emerged probably within within at least two days, three days. If it starts to emerge within four days, we start to lose. We start to get that differences in emergence and that kind of thing. In the real world, um, we're we're really giving ourselves that sort of a margin of, of, of time period. Hmm. Now, growers in recent years have been doing a lot of flag tests, and you can really track that emergence using a flag test. Let's talk about how the field's setting up. Um, you know, if you've got a 220 bushel, 240 bushel, um, you know, yield potential, 
um, you know, everything's emerging evenly versus, you know, a, a spotty emergence. How do you start to sort of manage those different fields? We certainly, uh, um, from, from yield potential in those fields, we uh, know that if we have a, a uniform field uh, that's emerged quite well, the soil conditions are in, in good shape that there's there's lots of yield potential that's there if we start to see two or three thousand plants per per acre that are behind uh, by one leaf we know we lose uh, basically half the yield on those plants or on those those cobs is going to be half the size of cobs that are going to be there if we're two collars behind then then we we don't have a cob in that at all so in and and Roughly in a in a high yielding field, we'll we'll get the equivalent of eight bushels per per cob. So if we went uh, if we didn't have our thirty four to their thirty three and a half to thirty four, say we're only thirty one, uh, that's uh, that's losing up to uh, twenty four bushels right there. So it might take a, a field that <clears throat> has that potential for two twenty two thirty down to a two hundred and. Uh, uh, a field like that is uh, certainly something that we want to um, um, basically know that there's nothing we can do to replace that yield. That's just missing yield that's there. So we may not be as uh, uh, as <clears throat> as concerned about making sure it doesn't run out of nitrogen or a field that, <clears throat> you know, from the standpoint of of uh, managing with a fungicide, if we know that the population or the the stand or, or the ear count is going to be lower, it may be a field that we just back off on our um, uh, other other uh, uh, things later on. Say, for example, we we might leave that field out a little bit later in the fall, knowing that it uh, um, just doesn't have as much risk of lodging because there isn't as much uh, that needs to be set up for that plant. So it all starts with scouting. Get out and understand what you can t- control, right, Paul? Exactly. Just early season development. If we have corn at that three leaf stage now, two collar, um, there's a lot of things that we'll build on over the course of the next few months in decisions that we make. You know, if there's weeds there right now, you got to get them out of there because they're going to take their toll. Um, once we get into side dress time, <clears throat> if it looks like we are short of nitrogen, um, then you know we may want to increase our rates. Then, if we put our nitrogen on, and then we have a lot of rain, we get some denitrification. Then we may need to come back with more nitrogen. Um, those things that move along with the season um, are really um, the the push or pull um, are are determined by the base of the plant stand that's there and the yield potential that's there that's uh that's started the day the crop went into the ground Hmm. hey paul great stuff great insights uh hey thank you sir for uh, taking the time and stopping by and chatting on corn school oh my pleasure it's uh it's great to chat with you uh at such a, a great time of year to be in the field awesome